Happy Saturday, YouTube. So, um, very rarely do I admit that something that happened in this section of YouTube catch my attention. I ain't say very rarely does it catch my attention or interest me. I say very rarely do I admit it. But I will admit that this book uh, and all the drama behind this book that the Reed of Philadelphia, a.k.a. Rocky, uh, wrote has definitely caught my attention and perked my interest. Uh, I do plan to read the book. I haven't yet, but I do plan to purchase and read the book. And um, I, I think that it was very creative uh, that she thought to do it. Uh, and um, I hope that as a result of it, that she continues to write and to continue to uh, perfect her gift and, and, and learn about writing and not to say that she don't know, but as you do something, you get better and better and better and better at it. That, that's the hope, right? And, um, um, and like I said, I plan, I plan to read it and I hope that she goes on to write, um, part two, part three, part four, and, um, that she's a success. Now, let me say this. I'm, I'm not on any one side and all that, you know, I plan to read, read it just like a lot of other people plan to read it and buy it. I'm not on anybody's side. Like I said, it just, it just sparked my interest. And I think that, uh, you know, I hear, I've watched different videos and saw different sides and th different people points of view. And a lot of people have valid points, uh, points of view on the book. Is it fiction? Is it not fiction? Fiction? Because maybe some of the characters, quote unquote, names were changed or, uh, it, it was some of the, uh, events or things that she spoke about in the book. Was it changed up a little bit, uh, to fiction? You know, where does the law lie in, in all of this? Um, and, and one thing we have to always remember about, about the law is that, uh, attorneys practice law is it's, it's by interpretation and, and it's decided upon on humans based on interpretation of the law. So things could fall a lot of, a lot of ways when you start dealing with, with, with law and all of that. Um, my advice to, uh, Rocky would be, you know, if I was to, you know, just my personal, somebody watching YouTube, um, unprofessional, unprofessional advice would be for her to seek inexpensive legal counsel. Um, if she's going to continue with it. Um, now we all know that defamation or uh, slander um, lawsuits, they're very hard to prove and can be very expensive. Um, lawsuits itself can be very expensive, uh, very expensive. And then it's like, if you go through an expensive lawsuit and you sue someone, will you be able to get anything? You know, I mean, you know, uh, I always say, I've, I've said this often um, on videos, it's like if you sue someone and you get a judgment, well, just ask some of these major creditors to have judgments, how much money they've gotten. Folks keep judgments on their credit for 10 years and they drop off and, they, and, and the person never get anything. But that's neither here or there, I'm just saying. Um, but, but you know, you if, you, if you're going to venture into something like this, it's always, uh, like I said, it's uh, uh, wise to seek legal counsel and cover yourself. Um, the law is mutable. You know, it's, it's, the law is very mutable, but the law is also for sale. It's also for sale. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but you, but, she, but you can, um, utilize now, if, like, again, if she's going to venture into writing the book and, 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 and especially writing, uh, about quote unquote beef sector, if that exists or don't exist or whatever it is, um, maybe because of all of these small business loans and these opportunities that have come up because of this, uh, these uncertain times we find ourselves in with this, Mr. Rona, uh, maybe you should uh, check into that and see if if any if you qualify to to get any type of legal aid or legal assistance or pay for any type of publishing or legal matters or whatever you need to continue on in this venture using that small business 
loans that they're offering because of this Rona going on. That's, that's just the suggestion. Just throwing it out there and get yourself a tax ID number if you haven't already. Um, I, you probably have if you if you got all the publishing rights and everything and you have it listed with Amazon. And um, to my understanding, that's where it's listed. That's where people can buy the book. And you probably already have a separate tax ID number for that. But anyway, um, and what is intellectual? I keep hearing people say intellectual property. What is intellectual property? Intellectual property is a work or invention that is the result of creativity, such as a manuscript or a design to which one has rights and for which one may apply for a patent, copyright, trademark, etc. So I don't know whether, um, I'm not sure whether uh, a p public figure, whether that public figure be on a national uh, scale or a local scale a public figure um, is content creators or YouTubers considered public figures and you definitely come you come on social media and you definitely present yourself to the public um as a figure or a character or whatever so is what is your actions or what you say um does that become your intellectual property again there's so many with with, with laws there's so many um so many things left open to interpretation and argument and debate. That's why people go into the court of law and you have the plaintiff and the de defendant and they get to argue their points. And um, the law is so murky when it comes to certain things. It's so unclear. I, I'm sorry, my phone keep going off, y'all. Um, so I don't know. I don't know whether, you know, um, if somebody flat out copy something that you're doing word for word or action for action that that might be considered your intellectual property however if someone comes on and give or put in a book their opinion of miss cruiser and give a few examples of something maybe that i've said or supposedly done i don't know whether that falls under intellectual property or not but anyway um we have a few in this section of YouTube, we have a few people who um, uh, say that their profession is uh, is an attorney or a lawyer, so maybe they can answer those questions. I will not. Um, so, and and we also have to remember because there's also a debate over whether not only so so there's there's kind of two parts to this whole thing, uh, and I'm gonna talk about this. Public figures can't be sued. Um, based on the onion and Saturday night live. Um, there's two parts to this thing. One part is, 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 is the young lady writing the book in the first place based on loosely, according to her is fiction loosely based on maybe based on events that may have happened. Okay. Loosely or based on, I don't know whether that's her words or not, but you know, that's kind of what we're looking at here. So that that's one thing. Uh, did she have a right to write about that? Is it fiction or is not fiction? And then if who, if it's considered not fiction, where does the law fall in? And, and the people who think that she, she is the character they wrote about, for example, if fish is indeed Wiley, what rights does Wiley have? It's okay. So that that's, that's the first thing that's going on with the, the big debate going on with this. The second one is, is uh, a content creator read the book in its entirety read the book in its entirety um this content creator said hey i i bought the book and once i bought the book it was my property in a sense and i have a right to do with it what i want want to do with it is that true is that not true can you read someone's book in its entirety and and is that illegal have you just uh you know because for one thing if i listen to the full book in full, somebody else read it. I have no need to buy it. Uh, why are some books on YouTube where it's read in its entirety, and some books aren't? Um, did the author give permit? Have to give permission? 
um, or the publishing company or whomever have rights over the over the book? Do they have to give permission? Do they not give permission? You know, so that that's the other debate and argument that's 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 causing drama uh, over that. Now we have to remember that um, YouTube has rules in addition to and other than the the law itself because YouTube or Google owns the app. So they have their own rules. So let's say if it's legal to read a, a book that you bought, the entire book, let's say if it is, there is no uh, legal ramifications to it. Um, the next question is, is it something that YouTube allows you to do on your channel? Do they allow it? There are certain songs that uh, uh, like uh, I will use, for example, the hymns. Hymns is public domain. You know, there's a lot of hymns that the original author is not known. So it's public domain. But YouTube will still not allow you to play that on on their app. OK, so uh, a lot of times we talk about well, what is the law on that? And, and that's good because you want to protect yourself from civil suit or, or whatever. But then you also got to find out what is YouTube separate rule on that because they have a right to run their app how they want to run their app. And if they tell you don't do something, you don't do it. Simple as that. Uh, so so that's, that's that's the other thing. But again, I think that everybody had uh, valid arguments and I ain't on one side or the other. I just found this all interesting and decided to talk about it. So uh, satire is a legal shield. Uh, that legal shield of satire has been used by, if anybody's familiar with The Onion, I love The Onion. I love The Onion. Check Y'all check it out. They write some good stuff, politics, and, and, and on and on and on. Um, and they use a lot of satire. And of course, we know Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live is a perfect example of where they, I mean, the, the, to me, one of my most famous, I would to say to me, the, the most famous, but that's not the, well, in my opinion, my favorite is when they did um Sarah Palin when that woman on Saturday Night Live what is her name she's a comedian when she did Sarah uh, Sarah Palin she was famous after that now she's doing the co little commercials uh I think the Allstate commercial whatever commercial is where they talk about havoc but anyway um I'm gonna tell you when she's when she did that character um why couldn't Sarah Palin sue Saturday Night Live or sue her? Because satire is a legal shield. So, you know, does this fall under the the um, the window of satire? I don't know. I, I don't know because, you know, again, we have to ask some of the attorneys that's uh, here in this section. But, uh, so... Lolo, and I hope she don't mind me saying her name, read the book. And like I said, when she read the book, that, that you know, calls really, read a lot of people read the book. It, it was a lot of people read parts of the book, which is okay. Reading parts of the book is okay. Legally in YouTube rules, it's obviously okay. But she read it in its entirety, from what, from my understanding. I didn't watch the video, I didn't see the video, but from watching other videos, it was said that she read it in its entirety. And uh, even though there's a lot that created a lot of drama and a lot of talk and a lot of videos and blah, blah, blah. I think we all should appreciate Lolo because it was pretty dry. <laughs> they say this section of YouTube was, it was going through a little drought. It was a little dry. And, and boy, is it, 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 it kickstarted some stuff for the weekend. Just in time for the weekend, it kickstarted some stuff. And, and this took her to her 1,000. And, and, you know, the thing about that is that we all have that one thing. Everybody who's reached their, their goal of the, of the golden 1,000 subscribers, and then you, your next goal is, is, is 4,000 watch minutes. Now, you know, I always got to do things backwards. I reached I reach 4,000 watch minutes. Then I hit 1,000 because I'm always backwards. But however you hit it, is that's the goal. I mean, if you're wanting to be a YouTuber, content creator, whatever, that's the goal. You can use your phone to go live and 
you get your little community tab and then they send you the little email want to monetize go on monetize hit that button to monetize and give us all your information so you can monetize so you know that's some people's goal not some people go you know some people claim it ain't they go but yet they still asking you to subscribe whatever whatever so um but you know i don't shade her or look down on her for that we all i mean mine was william mccray i ain't even gonna lie i started talking about that william mccray and and putting up some of his videos and boom i was at a thousand we all had that one thing that that niche that we found that one thing that quickly put us over uh you know and, and quick everybody everybody i can start naming off people but i won't because i don't want y'all come come bothering me now don't, don't be bothering me <laughs> <laughs> but everybody so that that was her that was her thing that was her thing that pushed over 1000 congratulations to her um you know and and i heard that her page got striked girl wait out your 90 days and then uh keep it going um and, and, and as i said you know all all the youtubers the content creators or whatever you call folks on this side of uh, 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 this section of youtube they should be happy you know the, the dam was released <laughs> it's not dry no more people got something to talk about now you know got something to look for those who don't do videos they got something to look at and comment on now so you know let's, let's, you know so at least for a little while you know it's gonna fade away but um so like when you when you're writing when you decide to write about fiction using real events or real characters or loosely basing it on those real characters there's a few things i guess that the law probably look at to determine uh, whether, you know, because I think the thing is, is whether you slandered them or whether you defamed uh, defini defamation of character. And so it's a few things they look at. Is the person you're writing about an obscure private citizen? If you aren't, if, if they aren't at least in the least bit famous, excuse me, you may have a problem. So if there's somebody that's, that, wants to be private because we all always say you know that it's unfair that celebrities can't have privacy but when you live your life out in the public people are interested in you and and, and they're interested in you in most cases outside of what you do for example football player Everybody want to know what Cam Newton does. They want to know how many children he had, why he with this lady, what did she do? You know, they cared about the fact that she, that his kid's mama is a scripper. They want to know is, is Cam gay, straight or bi? They want to know why Cam dressed like him. None of that has nothing to do with the way that Cam could throw that football or run that ball as a quarterback. But that's how people do. They want to know. They they don't want to just you know see Beyonce and she can sing and she can she can reach that note or or she singing in that key or that uh, or that key or how she put her songs together or that she can dance while she sing and perform. They want to know how many kids she had. How did she have those kids? Did she carry them herself? You know why did she marry Jay Z? Is her and Jay Z doing okay? Did Jay Z mess around? I mean, outside of what people do. So I guess it's the same thing with content creators. People watch these people day in and day out and they get interested in them and they like them and they kind of, you know, on, on a lower level fan out a little bit over and want to know the little background behind them. So is the person a private person or, or have they exposed themselves to the public? Um, you know, th that's one question that's, that's considered and that you have to look at. Uh, the trick with non-famous real people is not to just rename them, but actually to fictionalize them. So the second question is, is was the person not only renamed, but did you fictionalize them? But see, that's kind of a thin line and tricky because if you're, if you want to make it interesting, then the, the, the interesting thing is to, is to read the book and say, ah, oh, I think, I think that's Wiley. That must be, I use Wiley because he's safe because I don't think he's going to bother me. I don't think maybe he will, but uh, I think that's Wiley. I th that's him. That's him. That's what makes it exciting. And, and that's the whole draw of it. But there's a dangerous line there because is it Wiley? Is it too close to Wiley? Did I really fictionalize him? So you know, that that's another thing that's looked at. Is the person you're writing about famous enough to qualify as a public figure? Are they a big name actor, musician, politician, 
If so, good news for you, your you because the public figure have a clear higher bar as uh, in a defamation case, they have to prove that you were acting uh, with actual malice about which they which they more below. Oh, oh, we was talking about it's going to talk about more below in the in the article I was using, uh, which was a um, the article I was using was a law article. So it, it's you know social media uh, laws is so murky. It's so unclear because it's, it's kind of even though social media has been around for a long time uh it's still new to how they will handle the laws around social media so if you are a content creator um does that mean you're a public figure and can somebody defaming your name does it hurt your pockets is it going to cause you to lose money in other words um that's something they would look at and and again with social media uh, laws being so unclear even when you go to law enforcement about social media there's always a side eye with them because because in most cases they haven't been trained on um internet um crimes you know, in a sense, unless it's something to do with, um, uh, uh, you know, using it to kidnap or using it, uh, to, you know, with children and, and I can't remember like sex trafficking or sex cases or something like that. But other than that, you know, bullying and all of that is still, it's still kind of unclear for them. Um, we don't know. It's the person, <laughs> it's the person you're writing about dead. It's so knock yourself out. Dead people can't sue you for what you write about them and neither can their heirs nor their fans. I, I don't know. I just threw that in as an April Fool's joke. Some of y'all will get it. Some of you won't. <laughs> Moving on. But anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, so um, there was, you know, I tried to think of, uh, of an example of someone is that all my little slides? I'm scared to move over. Oh, yeah, that's all my little slides. Um, I, I tried to think of an example of somebody who was sued uh, based on something that they wrote. And I, I don't know whether y'all remember Real World uh, Kevin, and I can't think of his net last name, but uh, The Real World was on MTV. It was one of the first reality shows um, that I watched. I think it might have been the first reality shows that started coming on. And I'm pretty sure that Kevin... Cause I remember Kevin and David and David was a comedian that, that aggravated everybody. And what's up? Uh, wasn't that lady on there? She's on another, what is her name? She do the bonnet Chronicles now. I think she was on there too. What is her name? I can't think of her name. Let me tell y'all right now. I don't remember celebrities names and all of that. I don't get off into their names. So it may come to me later, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't be, I'm not really into celebrity gossip or news. Now, did anything's wrong with it? It's, it just, I'm not into it. So a lot of times I can't remember their names, but Tammy, that's her name, Tammy Rowan. So, so, uh, the guy, Kevin, he was such a serious guy. I think he was like, um, into, uh, writing and journalism himself or is, uh, but on the show, he was so serious all the time. But anyway, he was in fact sued for slander. Um, this was around 2018, 2019, um, concerning something that he had written and published and the one and the woman who sued him actually won she won so you know and that's just one case i just want to come up with one that people would be or somebody that people would be familiar with um and again you know he was on a reality show and um so so it is winnable but again um the information is, is very, very, it's very um, hard to prove. And it can be, I guess it can be expensive. Um, you know, dealing with the law itself is, 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 is expensive. So two things, again, two things going on. Um, is it okay to read the book in its entirety? Is that okay? Was it okay for her to write the book um, using the characters, even though she renamed the characters. That's the other question, which is going to make, like I said, which is going to make for 
some pretty good content over the next few days here, uh, hopefully. Um, but again, I say to the young lady who wrote the book that, you know, if you want to continue along these lines, if you want to continue with this project, um, you want to, you want to do it on a safer side to avoid, you know, any illegal things. Um, you want to denature your characters, denature your characters. So in, in the second part, and I, I imagine the second part probably will be a little bit longer than part one. And, and a little bit more in, in detail. So again, my advice to you would be to, to denature your characters. And check with a uh, getting a literary um, attorney or a, public, a publishing attorney. You know, we're always talking about attorneys, but we got to remember that, you know, you got attorneys that deal in different fields of the law. You got criminal attorneys, you got corporate attorneys. Corporate attorneys can't really help you with a criminal case because they really haven't had any experience of practicing it. They do corporate law. You got lawyers who, who are ambulance chasers. You know, if you get a ticket, you're going you gonna to get a bunch of letters in your mailbox from all of these, you know, attorneys that really deal in traffic court. That's their, that's their section of or area of a profession, blah, 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 whatever. There you go, Duchess Kelly Love, blah, blah, blah. And, um... And, but then you have, you do have entertainment attorneys, but then for writers, you have, um, you do have literary, uh, attorneys and publishing attorneys. And again, I know that's expensive. Um, and, but check into maybe some legal aid or some legal help. Again, if you're going to pursue, uh, this career, if you're going to pursue this project, it may be worth for you to really look into, um, as you continue on to write these parts, it's interesting. Um, it's interesting. People like this kind of stuff. And, um, uh, so it may work out for you. But anyway, I just want to talk about it. I, again, I ain't on nobody's side or the other. I don't have no side. I'm over here on the Lord's side. <laughs> I'm on Miss Cruz's side, but I just found it interesting and thought I would, you know, give, give my little opinions and nobody asked me, as Sticks Girl say, nobody asked me, but I gave it. I hope y'all enjoy y'all weekend. Stay safe. This is Miss Cruiser. Please like, share, and subscribe.